If we could only catch it for a while Just letting time go by Sky orange hue, bright eyes and blue Slow down my mind In silence for a while Gliding in the sky Don't think it out, don't kill it loud This jingled mind Don't hide all our way We are leaving in the wind blue And the sky turns to blue And all issues and this small
this week on Overproduced. The best part about being a mixing engineer is that I get to work with all different types of musicians and producers. Today, everyone in the house is getting together for a good old fashioned gift exchange. What could go wrong? Set your compressor to an eight to one ratio. That's essentially just a limiter. You don't need a compressor if you just play right. What? But endure press to do that. If I know nothing of recordings, then why am I the one in possession of a recorder? One house and five musicians and producers. This house is like a good mix. You've got lows, you've got highs, and some frequencies need to be cut. If you think you could press my buttons, think again. I'll press the buttons here. I don't know what CDs are. I can record in the woods with no electricity. Can you? No one better go behind my bark, lest they want to have their legs broken. But the only thing they're producing is drama. This is Overproduced. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you not want a reality TV parody about a house of music producers? This holiday, get what you really want at the 12 Days of UAD sale. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm Ben from Universal Audio. Welcome back to Office Hours. Oh, it's good to be back after a nice holiday weekend. And today, this is probably one of the most like highly requested topics for us to touch on how to do vocals uh and of course like you know we all have a lot of fun kind of getting creative with mixing on vocals but we wanted to kind of explore the entire process from recording all the way through editing to mixing uh kind of all the steps that you guys need to think about uh some tips some tricks for you guys to use on your vocal productions and thankfully i don't have to do it all alone because we've got matt and drew here with us today how you guys doing <clears throat> good good, good how you been how you doing matt doing good good you guys have a good. Get a, get enough turkey in over the weekend. <laughs> Plenty of turkey. Yeah. Plenty of turkey. Plenty, yeah. Right? Yeah. Plenty till next year. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and as you guys saw, the the twelve days of UAD sale, it's uh, uh, it's been extended. It's going till tomorrow. So all the coupons that you guys have been racking up, they're still available in your cart until tomorrow at midnight. So uh, if you guys have been having, if you got an eye on any plugins, any of those deals uh, looking good, make sure you get it before your coupons expire because that would be that would be that would be the only real travesty is if you miss out on the opportunity to uh get some of the actual best deals of the year uh over there on, Bla on black friday so uh yeah head over uaudio.com you get you'll see it right on the home page uh get in there get what you really want and uh yeah we've had a lot of fun had a, a ton of fun with the with the video series overproduced um and I guess you know before we really dive in into talking about vocals, I just want to uh, just want to highlight some of our favorite comments from the last week uh, here over on the channel. Uh, so from uh, from last week's show, or actually, sorry, this is a I think it's two week, two three weeks ago where we talked about parallel compression. HK is coming in with great explanation of a topic that seems to be common knowledge, yet you get more detail and clear up every aspect of it when it's used for maximum quote unquote effect. You're welcome. That was that's exactly what we're going for here. Uh, on the low end therapy, which was last week's show, uh, John Johnny said, "I can't believe there was no mention of the VOC. and I can't. I 100% agree with you, John. <laughs> we did a whole low end show, guys. Somehow VOG was not did not come up one bit. I guess it was maybe it was just oh, so, it was just so obvious that we were just really yeah. We, yeah. We, we were all we were really like I know when we were preparing for the show we were all like dead set." IBP, we finally we finally had a really great show to illustrate the other little labs plugin on the UAD platform, the, the IBP, and we just totally neglected the fog. Huge oversight. Yeah, will not happen yeah. again. Yep. We'll we'll make a formal apology. Uh, but really, <laughs> the the thing that you need to know about VOG is that we have a video uh, with Mix by Ali explaining how he uses the VOG. And that's kind of all you need to know. Like, just check out the mix by and and I've seen people who are like, think that his method for using it is too simple, but he nailed it. That is, is exactly right. It is that simple. It, it is, is literally that simple. that simple. Simple plugin. Yep. Yep. Uh, Zach is saying uh, this is kind of going back to an older video, uh, but perennial favorite: uh, the Shakir King recording and miking uh, acoustic guitars. Uh, Zach saying he's loved seeing an example of how a hundred dollar mic can be used alongside expensive equipment. Mic placing it, matching it to the application, desired sound is so important. 
Hundred percent agree with that. The uh, the cool, really cool thing about that video was a good. It was a good <laughs> mixture of different types of equipment, but the whole emphasis was on kind of having a, a an idea in your mind of what you want it to sound like, and then matching the miking technique and, and microphone choice, preamps, processing, all that stuff, kind of helping build towards that sound. Uh, and Jakir is just an actual. He's just a complete master of getting exactly what he wants uh, recorded. <clears throat> Uh, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, you know, we've had the, the 12 days of UAD, so uh, Gurney, uh, <laughs> just flood of emojis. 100% agree. If you guys haven't seen the last video of this, uh, what kind of engineer are you? This is the, the Mixing Engineer episode. Has my absolute favorite scene. It's the one in the thumbnail there where they're at the kitchen table. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And he uses his uh, Grammy nomination uh, to, to supersede the sound guy. Uh, but the best part is that <laughs> Gurney, you know, Flood of emojis. Moments later, LMA, LMA. Yeah, <laughs> so I think, needed I think, more. We I didn't quite they, convey. I was like, I'm pretty sure I got to like the, one of the first punchlines. Typed the first comment. Got to the, probably the dinner scene. Typed the rest of them. Um, so yeah, fully agree with that. Fully agree with that. Uh, and then the last one here, I engineer again. Just just lots of emojis. I, I think I think people are, are really feeling the uh, the the overproduced reality TV show that we uh, put on this year. Uh, so good to see, good to see you guys having fun with those because we had a lot of fun making them as well. Uh, so yeah, that's that's our, our comments. Uh, as always, guys, make sure uh, if you if you guys are, get here early enough, you get to hang out, chat during the countdown, listen to some good tunes. If you guys do have some music you'd like to contribute to future live streams, uh, hit us up live at uaudio.com uh, with any music that you'd like to have us feature, and uh, you might make the cut. That'd be great to have you guys uh, joining us. So, uh, without further ado, let's let's get into let's get into vocals, guys, because that's uh, you know, if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll I'll own it. But I, in my opinion, vocals are always the most important part of the mix, if they're in there. If it's not instrumental music, it's basically it is hands down the most important element of your. Yeah, mix. and I think that, I yeah, think 100%. if you're somebody who doesn't think that, you're probably wrong. Like you probably, <laughs> yeah. it's just you. You know what I mean? Uh, it's like yeah. because the fact is, the fact is, like you know, we engineer types, we tech types, we tend to think about things in the more technical side, and we think that we're the most important thing, and blah blah blah. But you gotta you gotta realize that the average person just takes in music as this sort of as a you know if they don't know the technical side of it you know people just enjoy music as as the art form that it is it's one of the basic human arts it's people would you put two people on an island and they'll start singing at some point you know they'll whatever yep. they'll howl at the moon or whatever so yeah so even if you don't think that i think i think that it's it's true so it, it absolutely it's yep. it's the, it is drew i'm so glad you brought it up that way because it is so true that like this is what m normal people when they listen to music when they're not engineers they're not artists musicians who are like trying to pick apart what they're listening to the number one thing people hear is going to be it's going to be the melody it's the hook it's yep. it's the thing that that comes out at them uh i've always been surprised the number one the number two things is like the lyrics like melody yeah. melody hookiness lyrics and then you start getting the groove which is you know drums and bass and then everything else kind of falls off in terms of a normal person's attention. So the fact that yeah. vocals kind of encapsulate two of the top three elements that uh, a normal listener hears, all the all the more reason to like really spend a lot of time working on your vocals and making making them really stand out, uh, making them make sure they catch people's ears, make sure you know, there's there's so much that goes into crafting a great sounding vocal. And it's not just all done at the mix. And this is this is I think the big thing we want to emphasize before we really start diving into all the cool like mixing tricks and, and some of the chains that we've built for doing these, is it's like, man, it's it's arrangement, right? It's like it's thinking about the vocal production, you know, should there be a single vocal? Should it be double? Should we do harmonies here? Should there be ad like all these aspects of it? This is you know, kind of getting out of the engineering territory, a little bit more in the production territory, but this is, you know, I don't know about you guys, but like we all wear multiple hats, right? Like the, there's oftentimes, even when I have been just hired as an engineer on a project that you end up being like, Hey, you know, maybe try this or, you know, the artist will ask for your feedback. And, you know, if you, if you're enjoying the music, why not, why not, uh, you know, kind of give them, give them some ideas, give them some creative input as well. 
um because it's typically appreciated typically you know yeah. it's a take it or leave it <laughs> thing but man i know a lot of people really do do love kind of hearing from an outside especially if it's a singer artist and they're kind of doing their own thing all by themselves again that outside perspective is a huge huge deal yeah and you want to ease into it though you know like it's one of those things where you have to build that relationship and let it build organically if you don't want to go start if you're just engineering you don't want to go start you know poking your nose into the into the intricacies of the performance or the melody or the lyric or whatever until you know let that build you know let it let that relationship grow organically then then you know it's going to be a good one from from there and then mm -hmm. they'll take your feedback you know yeah totally so mm -hmm. so yeah so uh, hopefully no one uh, don't have the comments pulled up right now but hopefully no one disagrees with us that the vocals are the most important fact otherwise we're gonna we're gonna have a quick little fight about it and <laughs> yeah we're, let's see and we're let's gonna see. win uh but let's 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 talk about let's talk about tracking real quick like the you know <laughs> andy 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 max said don't tell the lead guitarist that <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah just care careful what you say around the drummer you know uh, good one uh, andy good one andy point taken <laughs> Point yep. taken. Unless it's instrumental, of course, guys. Yeah. So, uh, so let's talk about tracking real quick, guys. Like, let's give. Let's. I want to give folks some tips for when it comes to tracking vocals. Uh, and I think you know my number one trick for tracking vocals is uh, it comes down to mic choice. And try. You know, I like to call it like trying before you buy. So kind of like auditioning. And I would do this on sessions, especially if I'm working with a singer for the first time and I don't know their voice super well i don't know the song super well i'd put up you know anywhere between two three four microphones up in the room and then we would do we would use this as a warm-up so i'd say hey sing part of the first verse for me let's do the first mic the second mic third mic fourth mic and then ask them in there you know hey in the headphones like did one of those feel better to you and and typically the one that they like the most is also ends up always being the one that i like the most um and this is if you if you haven't had the chance or the opportunity to, to experiment with multiple microphones before, the impact that this has on the sound, on the final sound, on the like performance, on every aspect of it, biggest biggest thing you can change uh, uh, besides changing the singer out um, is is to change the microphone around, play around with the polar pattern. Um, you know, this is something where uh, you know uh, something like the Townsend Sphere can be a godsend, right? Because like. I just yeah. mentioned setting up four different microphones, plugging them all in. That's that's a lot of work. A Townsend, yeah. you could <clears throat> you know just switch the models around, or you could record it clean and then you know play around with this after the fact as well. So don't sleep on mic choice as as one of the most important factors for shaping and, and starting off your vocal sound. Yeah, one of the things I do, just a little tip for especially for those of you out there, you know, running studios and stuff is what ben just described i often offer that to my clients as for free you know hey come in for an hour you know like a week ahead mm -hmm. of the session or something like come in for an hour and help me do a mic test i mean number one it gets it gets you to be able to do what ben just said but number two it really it shows that artist that like you're really paying attention to the you know to the nuances and to the deep subtle details so um i always i always do that i do that with you know acoustic guitar players too trying to find the right mic combo so Anyway, mm -hmm. just something to that way they're not doing a mic test on the session on the day of the session. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, with all the bandmates uh, all watching idea. them and they're all like looking at their <laughs> yeah. watch, be like, Are, "Is he charging us for this right now? Exactly. Is this biting exactly. into our time?" Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. That's a good call, Drew. Uh, how about you, Matt? What uh, you got any tips for for tracking vocals that you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, aside from mic choice, I think uh, the environment that you record in is, is pretty important. You know, mm -hmm. um, for a lot of people, if yeah. you're just in like a bedroom or something like that, I mean, uh, that can have a pretty big impact on the sound of your recording. So um, picking a good location, treating your room, uh, even getting like a reflection filter, those are all things that can definitely help improve the quality of your recordings. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'd love to see, you know, show of hands, uh, both here on the show and also in the chat. How does everybody feel about vocal booths? Is this a <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs down? I think is is the easy way to go for this. Uh, you know, personally, I'm uh, I like I like recording vocals in as big of a space as possible. Um, yeah, how about yeah, you guys? That's yeah, it's super counterintuitive. You know, like it it you know we think of vocal booths as being like the quote unquote proper way to do vocals, and a lot of people have that misconception. But the reality is is that they're they're a necessary evil. You know, they're like mm -hmm. glass. Glass in a recording studio is yeah. a necessary evil. You know, vocal yeah. booths, uh, isolation booths, necessary evils. Uh, but yeah, like you said, it, you're better off to be in a in a in a large space. And that's not to say you don't still use some baffling to control reflections. But but the idea is, and it's somewhat counterintuitive. A small booth actually has the the wall so close to you that even though you think you might be absorbing it, if you have a lot of foam or a lot of high frequency absorption, 
it, you think you're doing it, but you're you might you're not actually you're actually not not mm -hmm. all frequencies. And since they're so close, they actually bounce off the wall and get to the mic quicker and louder. Whereas yeah. in a bigger room, they go out further. And it takes longer and they dissipate so much more of their energy by the time they do reflect and come back there, A, way later and B, really far down. So it, it, it is somewhat counterintuitive. But yeah, you're right, Ben. Like, you know, all the classics would be a mic, you know, out in a room, baffled off a little bit, but in a big space, you know. Yeah. Oh, it looks like the, the chat, the chat's also fairly split, but it looks like majority of you guys are, are, are with us on the kind of the thumbs down. Like um, Playlist is saying, you know, it has like the fish tank sound and that's that's you're that's a great way of describing it i call yeah. it like the basketball sound it's this like weird mm. kind of notchy resonant thing that if it's too small of a booth if it's too reflective of a booth it can really it can really hamper it and it, it can be much more difficult to get a like a natural kind of open sound uh so yeah just like you said really like I, I i was i'll prefer to like put it in a room the walls are so far away that they have way less of an impact on on what the mic sounds yeah. and you know if you, yeah if you put the mic into omni maybe you capture a little bit more of, of what's going on around it but again the distance thing uh ends up mattering the most um, yeah so yeah i guess drew what else what else would you recommend for folks to get the for tracking great sounding vocals uh what's important yeah well i mean you know obviously you know some of the obvious stuff i guess is you know we got you know you gotta have a pop filter i mean unless you know you can do an, if you put the mic in omni right omni Omni mics have very little proximity effect and proximity pop filter. You know, the need for pop filtering is a byproduct of proximity effect. Mm -hmm. So, so, but typically we want to keep the, you know, a tighter pattern up front. So you definitely, you know, definitely a good pop filter. The other thing is, you know, you can be too close. There is such thing as too close, you know, um, I don't know good what you're singers, talking about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have no idea what you mean. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but you know, good singers know this as, you know, as far as mic technique goes and they kind of work the mic and they know that on a, you know, on a, on a quieter thing, a quieter passage, they might need to get a little closer, but then when they belt it out, they need to back it off. But you as the engineers, the producer can actually kind of dictate that. And for me, that's where the, the, the pop filter is kind of the pop filter is my check, right? That's my yeah. distance yeah. barrier, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, don't be afraid to come back. And, you know, because it's funny, we do all we do so much close miking nowadays. And, and if you don't understand proximity effect, you wind up with a mix that needs a whole bunch of high pass filtering and you have this low end buildup and things can get muddy really fast. So, um, you know, and to get back to the space, right? It's like, uh, you know, it, it's funny. The worst, the worst place you can be is a small reflective room with no treatment whatsoever, you know? Um, so that, and that's one thing. The, the other thing that, that a little tip is to, even if you're not going to track with a, with heavy compression is audition with it, right? Audition mm -hmm. with that heavy compression in order to see that if any, you know, if any, uh, reflections start to become too apparent. Yeah. Um, yeah. so those are, that's those are some point. things. Yeah. Those are mistakes I see for tra tracks coming in that, that I have to mix. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah especially like, if you're like in your headphones trying to get a sound you know when you're in the room with a bunch of musicians or whatever yeah it can be kind of hard to hear things that are going to present a problem later so i love that yeah idea of just applying the yeah. effects that you're going to use down the line and kind of uncover some of those problems yeah. yeah even if it's just for a few seconds just audition it real quick you know hey how will this how will this vocal sound take getting spanked you know uh -huh. and just see it. and then all of a sudden you might be like oh wow i'm now hearing that first reflection point from over there and i'm going to put another baffle up on that side or something like that yeah, yeah that's great. The uh, we did a video uh, with the uh, Nile uh, Nile Waters that did the music for the Twin X uh, commercial. Uh, it's out on our YouTube channel, but they kind of walk through their vocal chain, which includes a slammed eleven seventy six, hmm. but just in UAD monitor mode. So that way, the musicians hearing it totally cranked and like really tight compressed, so they hear all the detail. It, it, you know, it's two factors, right? So like you guys mentioned, you get to hear. You know, how's the room going to react? How's this going to sound? But most importantly for the musician, it's a good, it's a great way to get them to back off the mic because they're not struggling to <laughs> yeah. hear themselves, right? Like the more gain that they have in their mm -hmm. headphones, the more they're like, oh, I sound good back here. And they're less likely to be like, yo, I need to be up on the mic. And yeah, it, it, it makes a huge difference. So yeah, even if, and this is a, a kind of a great thing about working with the UAD platform, right guys, is that you can commit this stuff. So like if you, if you've got compression that you, you know, you know, you're going to love, you know, that's exactly what the song needs. You can commit it right then and there. You can record through uh, LA2A or through like an Avalon channel or Vox box, right? You can capture all of that uh, in real time, or you can put it in monitor mode where you can monitor again, 
in real time, but what gets recorded into your DAW uh, is uncompressed, and then it allows you to, to tweak the tweak the settings and everything about it later. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I'm sure, yeah, we'll get we'll talk a bunch about. And this is so we kind of talked compression EQ, the room, distance, pop filters, mic choice, printing, uh, you know, printing or monitoring effects. Um, I guess the, you know the last thing we really haven't touched on here, guys, is is like the preamp. Uh, how, uh, scale one to ten, how important is the preamp uh, in your mind for getting a vocal sound? Gosh, and it's hard to put it on a scale of one to ten. I mean, I feel like it's just yeah. like you know, it's like all engineering. It's 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 subtlety stacked on subtlety stacked on subtlety stacked on subtlety, and all of a sudden mm-hmm. it ain't so subtle, you know. And preamp is one of those. Yeah. I do think I will say this, and I'll just push back on this just to be contrarian a bit. I do think that people overemphasize the importance of the preamp these days. If you have actually done shootouts between preamp A and preamp B, mm-hmm. it's actually it's often quite subtle. Um, I'm not saying it's not important, but it, it's it's probably more subtle than you think, given you know what the industry tells you i think sometimes um but sometimes it's just a matter of finding the right thing you know a couple weeks ago we did that manly show and Mm -hmm. it was it was so obvious when we swap when we swap the preamp in and out um we've done it with the 88 rs that really just in and of itself enhances vocals so i i think it's just one of many important factors but it's hard to quantify i I suppose you know i don't know what you guys think but yeah i think it depends on how you're using the preamp too right because like it if you're going for like a clean kind of lower gain sound, I mean, yeah, most true. plugins are going to be more linear at lower gains. And then when you start driving things a little bit harder, things get more yeah. nonlinear and you're going to notice a lot bigger difference between two different preamps. Yeah. So. That's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah and I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat. Like there, there's definitely some preamps that are just smack you over the, over the head with like, Hey, here's the sound. And then there's other ones that like, just give you a, like, I like to think of them kind of setting you up for success down the road. Um, and, and kind of, crafting the sound and then most importantly a lot of uh, especially you know if we're talking specifically about unison preamps they offer more than just the preamp right guys like you have Voxbox, yeah. avalon neve you, you got these channel strip ones that allow you to do the best of both worlds and uh and there's actually a question here from geo asking you know if you track with the channel and monitor mode <laughs> do you still print the unison effect and yeah it, this is this is why i love this workflow geo is like you can use the use the unison mode Put Voxbox, SSL channel, Avalon, something that has you know a nice high pass filter, has a a, a, gen, a nice easy to use EQ, a little bit of compression. You can kind of use this as like your uh, as your starting point for your vocal sound, and then you can go down into the effects section, and those are now in monitor mode. That's where you can slam it into an LA two A to just you know give a ton of energy and a lot of feedback to the artist, but you're only committing what's in the unison slot. So you can commit gentle compression, you know, kind of a, a safer setting through a beautiful sounding preamp, and then get gnarly with it so they can really hear themselves over the music. And you're kind of getting the you're getting the advantage of both uh, tracking and monitoring through uh, great sounding effects. Yeah, just to get back to that preamp thing, Ben, I just just to to drive that point home is that 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 it is pretty subtle, and therefore I don't think anybody should ever hesitate to print a unison preamp. Like I don't think Mm -hmm. you should ever ever hesitate to print a unison preamp. It's a subtle character change, and it's part of the process, and it's it's kind of like bypassing the mic. Like how do you bypass the mic? You don't, right? You don't bypass the mic. You don't bypass the preamp. These are at least two things that have to be you know semi committed um, during that process. So I would just encourage people to never hesitate to print you know to print you uh print unison yeah so i think i think we kind of stack this up guys right so it's like probably number one most important thing is your mic choice your room your distance you know kind of like how you set that mic up in the room and, and interface it with the singer those are those are top of the pile and then you start kind of working your way down into like the preamp the compression etc um eq kind of getting your processing right uh, because so much of it yeah you can monitor through it or you can commit to it as well um and I guess the last thing is is the actual recording method, right? So now now you've got all the assume that you've got a great sound. You and the vocalist are both happy. Now it's time to do takes, um, and there's so many different ways of doing this. And this is it really depends a lot on the artist, in my experience, right? Of like what's their preferred way to work? Do they want to just go top to bottom and do like five takes? and then come in the control room and kind of comp it together or just pick one and then, you know, fix little bits or do they want to work like line by line and stack things up and then move on to the next line. There's, there's really no one right way of doing this, but the biggest advice that I think we can give you guys around like the actual recording workflow is to stay organized (laughs) is to like 
think <laughs> ahead a little bit. Prepare, you know, make sure you've got tracks named. You're using versions or playlists um, or takes. You're kind of make sure you're, you're you're keeping a track of what's where, what's what, what's good, what's not. And there's so many so many tricks around this. Like you know, personally, like I'll I'll try to keep everything obviously well named, but most importantly, if I hear something that's good. I'll separate it. I'll, I may not even like highlight it or change its color. I won't do anything to it, but just like giving it a separate means like, oh, this this little phrase was something. If it's really bad, I'll separate it and mute it. Be like, no, let's, <laughs> let's never listen to that again. Uh, <laughs> but you know, keeping keeping these things, keeping track of these things, especially because as an engineer, as the producer, your your number one goal at this point, now that you've like all the technical stuffs kind of handled, is to now focus on the music and focus on the performance giving the giving the vocalist feedback so that they're giving their best possible uh performance and this means also keeping up with them and keeping in the keeping in the mode and not being like hmm let's let's stop let's stop the flow for 10 minutes and and listen back to bad takes like no like sometimes it's it's much better just keep going you know keep pushing forward <clears throat> maybe if they're struggling on a part be like you know what let's not worry about the high part in the chorus right now let's go let's go hit the bridge get that done we'll take a little 10 minute break while i comp all together and then we'll come back and try again in a half hour like there's so this is the psychology of being an engineer and producer interfacing with musicians and it's you know there's there's no plugins that do this for you unfortunately guys I, <laughs> yeah you don't want to you don't want to impose and you don't want to impose your workflow on them you know so if you if you you happen to like a uh, singers who take full takes but they want to work on it section by section or vice versa you know don't definitely don't impose your what you think is the better workflow on them you know you gotta you gotta be malleable and and sort of go with the flow and uh you know be able to be able to adapt to them you know because the, obviously that's the goal you know uh, to get back to our first point you know like at the end of the day nobody cares who engineered a vocal you know what i mean they just <laughs> yep. they could care less you know yep. we uh, we engineers we like to try and put too much emphasis on ourselves it's like we, we don't really matter at the end of the day it's 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 all about the song, all about the voice, all about that performance. So, mm -hmm. best the best way the best way I've heard to reference that is like just remember whose name is on the front cover of the album. Just, <laughs> yeah, that's just keep yeah, that, that's keep that in matters. mind. Like, if you're if you're lucky as the engineer, yours will be a, you might get the inside cover somewhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. Well, so that's that's a, a ton of tracking tips, and you know, if you guys want to dive deeper into tracking, uh, we've actually got we've got a couple of, of awesome videos that we've done in the past around this. Uh, one of them, you know, I just searched on youtube U uad vocal recording you'll uh there's the one with me and greaves uh talking uh, recording hip-hop kind of vocals working with autotune working with the preamp mics all that sort of stuff um we did a k-pop session with uh with the group uh liar a couple months ago they kind of walked through the, and with that one you actually get to see them in the tracking process uh and this is a live stream so it's unedited uh and and really a very cool raw way of seeing how pop vocals get layered up uh, and then of course shakir came in and uh, we did a similar thing recording studio vocals live uh, so you guys get to see get to see this process, and of course, as you can see, there's tons of great content out there from other uh, other channels all around recording and using UAD stuff. Because uh, end of the day, like this real time process makes all the difference in the world for for how you track in vocals. So I think that's a, a, a kind of a, a great uh, kind of a kind of a broad <laughs> look and view about the tracking <laughs> process for vocals. So now we're going to get into the fun part. We're going to let's talk about some vocal chains and some ideas here. Uh, and I think maybe the best way to do this, guys, would be just to uh, I think we've all got some sessions open with with uh, some techniques implemented, both for lead vocals, for some background vocals. And let's kind of let's play some examples for folks and break it, break it down, kind of show uh, show what's cool and what's interesting about it. Because for you guys watching at home, you know, your takeaway from here should be like, oh, I never thought to do that or like you know keep these in the back of your mind next time you're working on a vocal track as to, uh, as tricks or ideas to cut and to pull out and add to uh to your next production um so i guess yeah with that drew you want to you want to take us away with the first example yeah sure let's uh um so yeah so let, uh what i've got here is i've got a, a female pop vocal here um and you might notice i'll first start by showing you the in the uh in the timeline view, uh, just to let you know, these are these are Sphere tracks, right? So if you're not familiar with the Sphere L22 uh, mic modeler, uh, it records to stereo tracks. So and so you'll notice that the the left 
the left channel and the right channel are not symmetrical. That's by design. The left channel is the front facing capsule. The rear, the right channel is the rear facing capsule. And, you know, the plugin does its, you know, little magic and, and calculations on the fly to basically, that's how it is able to, uh, m- uh modify polar patterns, proximity effect on axis, off axis, etc. So in case you're wondering what this is, I figured I'd start out by just mentioning that. Um, so the first thing I would say um, is I've got a bunch of different, I've got a bunch of stuff prepped here. Um, the first thing I would say, uh, first bit of advice is um, that, that I find super important is I always, I always think it's i I've got a bunch of stuff pre-prepped, but I always get the sonics down first, right? I, this is this, I think this is super important to make sure, challenge yourself. Can I get this vocal to sound good and sit in a mix without, with zero effects? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's not going to end that way. You know, it's not going to end up that way, but challenge yourself with in, in that regard, because uh, for me, it's, um, you know, I, I feel like that by challenging myself for that, it, uh, I, I, you, you can't, it's, it's hard to reevaluate your EQ once it's swimming in reverb. If you do need to find, if you do need to come back, and circle back. I always I find it's useful to to bypass your you know time based effects and the reverbs and all that stuff while you're working on your EQ. So basically, um, so what you're so what you're kind of suggesting there, Drew, is like is get like the the core sound, the like no effect, the <clears throat> not going yeah. for you know just dry. What especially if, you know we're talking about lead vocals here. So like this yeah. is the vocal that's like down the middle of your mix. This is the one that the listener is going to be listening to the most. Yep. Make that rock on its own in the yeah. make, it, make it sound you know give it confidence give it energy yep get rid of it and it's hard you, like it's, it's super yeah. hard right <laughs> it's hard but but that's that'll pay dividends <laughs> down the road because you put a if you put a marginal vocal into the most amazing sounding reverb guess what you get you, you get, get a, marginal reverb you get, you, you, get know? A, you get a very wet <laughs> sounding marginal vocal yeah. exactly yeah yep. so so that so just remember that you know now we have the i have the benefit in this case of um since these are sphere tracks, right? So these were tracked without going through the plugin, without committing the model. Mm -hmm. Um, And the beauty of that is that, of course, I can now um, change the mic, uh, you know, change the mic uh, after the fact, right? Which Mm -hmm. is one of the beauties of sphere. I can even, you know, I can even adjust the polar pattern. That's right. Um, Yeah, So and you'll notice there is a high pass filter. So I've got a 100 hertz high pass filter here. I can move the axis should I want to, right? You might want to, the reason why you might want to do that is because different mics have different frequency contents, whether they're on axis or as you go off to the edge of their pattern. And Mm -hmm. so let's say something's bright. You might actually want to, you might actually want to like come, make it sound like it's coming slightly off axis to just tailor that frequency response. Um, You can actually change the proximity. So um, unlike the filter, which is just an EQ that's filtering out, uh, the bass buildup that you had for proximity because sphere records the front and rear capsules separately. Um, you actually have the ability to sort of play around with that. Um, what, what, as if it were further or closer away. Um, nice. so yeah, that, that's, uh, that, that's something that, that I've already chosen. I chose this, uh, this Elam 251 model. Um, Wonderful and then, choice. uh, yeah. Yeah. So then, and then, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of soothe. So I, mm-hmm. I, I, I have this on very gently, also in its highest quality mode, this plugin, I'm sure we're all aware. If you're not, you can check it out. It's basically some, you know, some AI that's looking for, you know, to pull out some resonances. It does, it has elements of DSing, but it also has, you know, elements of sort of demo, you know, modifying your vocal. If you've recorded it in a booth, it actually can be somewhat helpful in that regard. Um, so yeah, and then I'm using, I'm using the API vision here, which I'm just using right now as a gate. Um, in fact, and you'll notice I've got the EQ in, but flat, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, again, we're talking, it, passing through. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's it, there's a little something there, right? Just uh-huh. running through the EQ. Um, so I've got it going through that EQ and I think I used the, uh, yeah, I used a little bit of high pass as well. Yeah. So this vocal, it. you know, this is breathy female vocal as you're about to hear. And so I'm kind of wanting to control that bottom end. So, uh, the cool thing about Luna's uh, API console is you'll notice that I I'm in control of where, it, where it goes. Right. So I can choose whether or not that, where it is. And for me, I want it to, um, you know, mic model first and then let Sue do its little thing. And then I'm into my console. And then from there, you know, this is all static stuff. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. and then I'm, I'm going to follow it up with a little bit of dynamic stuff. This just, you know, this is one of my favorite plugins. You're going to see here, 
Uh, I'm a big fan of dynamic EQ because it's it's like EQ. It allows you to tone shape, but it does it obviously dynamically, and it's therefore it's not cutting and thinning something out when it's not necessary. Yeah, and especially um, like you can see the setting that you had there, right? You've basically got a, like a proximity dynamic. So yeah. you've got you've got the low end. Like if if it ever gets too deep and too rich, yeah, pull, it pulls it down. You've got basically a deesser yep. there on the top. If it gets yep. too too bright, too essy, sh- just it cuts it down, and then it looks like you've got something there in the middle to kind of be yeah. again a bit of a resonant thing of like if it's ever you're just you, you're kind of using some nice broad curves here, but you're you're yeah. essentially just evening out the tone of it if anything ever gets too much or too little. Yeah, this one, this for me, the you know mids for me are either four to five hundred boxiness or seven to you know eight hundred to nine hundred sort of honkiness right so in this mm-hmm. case i'm a little bit more in in the boxiness but so this on on any given day this might slide up or down a little bit um so that's what i that's what i use for them and i'll, I'll open these up once we hit play uh, but i just figured i'd run through it first and then of course we've got the you know the one of one of the best compressors plugins out there one of the best compressors out there mm-hmm. is you know the distressor um which I've got, you know, the high pass and, you know, the, the, uh, into detection circuit, I have that high mid bump. So it's, it's going to grab, it's going to listen for, it's going to listen for aggressiveness and, and a treat that and grab that a little bit more. And then another high pass filter. I know this is goofy. You know, you might think it's redundant to have all the, to have multiple high pass filters, but I don't know. I just build stuff up as it goes. And I, um, if, and I don't, I don't, I, I'm not going to revisit what I did earlier. It, it's all just sounding better to me as I go. Yeah. Um, and then a you know little deesser which is up around not at 8k, mm-hmm. uh, just grabbing some. Our our this precision deesser I know it's an old plugin but it's fantastic. It's super transparent. It works amazingly well. If you've not checked it out, check it out. And then of course I'm ending the channel with a little bit of C suite. Um, this uh, there's a little bit of vocal you know a little bit of, of like hiss or whatever that was part of the tracking. So. Right. Um, well, now, but right, let's so listen now, to it. Yeah. I was like, okay, know, so that's that the drive now we've, di- now we've dissected it. We've heard, we've seen what we got on their drive. I'd love to. Let's hear what it sounds like. Uh, it, you know, you can do a little before and after for folks. Yeah. Uh, okay. What this whole yeah. Cool. Doing. So let's hear. Let's hear. Let's hear with with the chain. Been down, but I never really gone this far. So obviously super duper bone dry, you know, might borderline uncomfortable, but like, again, it's on purpose to China kind of just like, how can, can I really get this vocal to plant? Can I get this vocal to sort of sit and behave itself and be compelling and all of that? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just draw, and, it draw, it just draws you in. Like, you know, yeah, I can only imagine what this sounds like with, with verb on it, but what is it? You know, it's got such yeah, an what do you, incredible, what I do? everything but the mic, amount, I guess. Yeah, it's like everything but the mic, I think would be interesting to hear. Yeah. Yeah, so here's here's everything off but but the mic. Well, of course we have a vocal level issue. Let me fix that. So a little tough to tell because there's such a level jump, but yeah, uh, play it one more time with a little bit more gain. Let's because uh, like yeah. you guys are, listen for this because like her you know her vibe it's still there like it's still her voice but this this now has an extra layer of softness that before it had an extra layer of presence to it so let's hear it soft again yeah and then we'll bring all these chains back you guys can hear the before and after all right here comes been down but i never really gone this far those level changes and undo the bypasses been down but i never really gone this far kill me when i saw her in the back of your car Oof, dude, so it, 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 it's that it's the immediacy is so apparent on that right like you, yeah you've, you've, it almost sounds like she's like taking two steps forward it's a little bit more even, right? So all the words are coming across with like a equal power and presence. Um, that's yeah, that's a really badass chain. Yeah, yeah. So that so so then so let's get into some effects now. If we if we uh, unless there's unless there's more we want to do on that. No. Uh, um, okay. Let's, yeah. Let's see what it sounds yeah, like so now with uh, with the sauce. 
Yeah, so so he, let's let's step through this sauce. Here's something that you know. For, for, for I've got a bunch of stuff set up here. One of the things I like to one of the first things I like to do is oops, uh, you opened up over there. Uh, one of the first things I like to do because we have such a um, it, it, it is such a raw, dry thing that almost sounds like that does sound a little bit fake and pasted on top. You know, I mean, in headphones it might sound kind of cool, but like on speakers, this sounds very sort of you know two dimensional. So one of the first things I like to do is I like to, uh, and, and it really, I know this is a drum setting or whatever, but it, it honestly almost doesn't really matter what you're doing here. I'm in re-mic mode, so I'm capturing the tone of these mics uh, with just the mid-room mics and the wet solo is on. So all this is really doing is, and I'll, I'll play I'll play this, uh, you know, I'll toggle this on and off. All it's doing is just placing this voice in a space, right? This mm -hmm. is subconscious, it's subliminal, like I really don't even want the listener to know this, and they, of course they don't really, they won't notice this. It'll just sound like the vocal was tracked in that space. So here it is without. Been down, but I never really gone this far. And then on. Kill me when I saw her in the back of your car. Right, it's just putting that first reflection point on it. It's it just, just, it's it just putting... adds, some, adds some walls on the left and right side of her vocal. Yeah, that's how I exactly. It. Yep, it's just yeah. That's per, that's a great way to put it, Ben. Just walls. It, it puts it now, and it, it it triggers things in the listener's brain that they don't realize is happening, and that is just localization, like the things mm -hmm. we do when we walk into rooms. You know, we notice the reflections. Yeah. Um. So that's just a baseline. That's just a baseline of something that I do on almost every vocal, where, um where I, I just need to replace that to, to kind of bring back the naturalness to, to make people feel like this is more of a real vocal and it's integrated into a track. Nice. Um, and then, so let's talk about some other things, you know, like one of the, the next thing that we can mention is um, something that I do pretty much again on every one. And it's this, you know, it's this guy, ever since we've gotten this guy, I, it, this guy has replaced, you know, the AMS delay has replaced um, other methods that I've done that I've used for this. Essentially, it's a, you know, a, a, a delay, it, it's a spread, you know, it's just, it's the default preset, right? The default preset of the, of the AMS plugin, there's a subtle pitch element to it. And there's a, you know, there's panning element to it and there's a subtle delay element to it. Um, and it just has that big, it just has that big wideness going on. Um, so let's hear what that brings to the party. Been down, but I never really gone this far. Without it, two in the morning. I've been here before, and so Ooh. there's one. Oh, yeah. Dude, uh, I mean, it's again, it's kind of a walls thing, right? It's it, it's it's dimension, but it's present. It's like it by putting these things here on the side and kind of spacing it out, it now brings more attention and forwardness to the to the what's in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. There's some other, you know, there's some options here. Like for example, if, let me turn off the spread. I turn off the spread and let's talk about, let's talk about a slap. You know, I got a couple different slaps set up because, the, and one of my favorite things for a slap, believe it or not, is this guy. This mm. is one of the most awesome sounding delays, right? If you're not using this as a delay, then definitely check that out. Um, you know, we have the tape delay segment here where, um, you know, where you can set the delay and I've got it, you know, we've got some, uh, you know, some, some short slaps, hundred and you know, hundred and thirty to one hundred and fifty. The one thing that's cool about this is like, you can use these repro electronics, yeah, to tailor to tailor the top end and the bottom end, right? Um, so let's see, let's throw this on here. So here's here it is with this with this slap. Been down, but I never really gone this far. Kill me when I saw her in the back of your so that's one option, right? You can okay. do another one. This is, this is one that's cool. Like this one, you know, if, if you're a fan of our, if you're the fan of our, of our EP 34, but didn't like that, it, it you can't, it's hard to get wide, right? Mm -hmm. You know, check, you know, try the, try this followed by the, you know, our, our spread program, right? Yep. The, the AMS spread. You put these two together and you have kind of the best of both worlds here. You have a, a you know, a way of getting a slap uh, with spread. Let's see. But I never really gone this far. Kill me when I saw her in the back of your car. Two in the morning. Yeah, so you can, you that's know, that, cool. Yeah, so you're getting the tape yeah. delay, kind of more tails, a little bit more like filling in the gaps. 
but then yeah. again by using the the AMS DMX to get the width it's yeah again, it's not crowding out the vocal and i uh, i've done that a lot too right where like i'll throw into the ep and then just kind of pan it a little to a side and then you get this kind of like the vocals here and its delays are over mm -hmm. here with yeah. this trick you're now like vocals are here delays are out over here yeah yeah oh and i forgot to mention that when i did the spread this is another thing i like to do is sometimes i'll put effects on on the returns of other things so here's my spread and i i put my spread into the slap Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So uh, that way only the spread is getting the slap and it just creates a more diffused, uh, you know, environment um, for that. Um, yeah. So, you know, one of the other thing you can potentially do is, you know, we can talk a little bit briefly about like automating stuff. So I hear I've got a long delay that's just going to come in. I've got it automated to come in on some specific spots. Been down, but I never really gone this far. You know, just augmenting some lines here mm -hmm. um, to, to kind of just give it some interest. And in, that's got some left and right playback happening with them. Love um, it. Yeah. Right, so, dude, so got, you know, this... got, got a bunch of questions here from the chat. Wanted to investigate. Okay. We're, we're, there, there's much investigation to be had in the shame because people are loving it. So number one is... Can we see how much the distressor is working? The people really oh, want yeah, to know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, so because yeah. it has such a great tightness to the vocal, is is it the distressor? Is it the dynamic EQ? What's really kind of given that to us? Yeah, yeah. Let, so let's walk through it. Yeah. So well, yeah. So here's the distressor. Been down, but I never really gone this far. So. Kill me when I saw her in the back of your car. Yeah, I mean, this is, and that's mild for me. Like, I, I'm not opposed. The distressor sounds good buried. Yeah. yeah I mean, just, uh, it yeah. sounds good buried. It just, it, it's almost impossible to make it sound good. In fact, I can tell by these settings, this is where a lot of my gain is coming from when I had to do that AB, because this, this is pretty high. Oh, uh, it's without it. Been down, but I never really gone this far. So a, a lot of the, you know, a lot of, a lot of what's, a lot of the push is coming right from here, so. Lovely. And then the other big question uh, coming from chat here is like, everyone's feeling a lot of air from her vocal. Mm -hmm. What is it? As you walk through the chain, I don't remember, like you had the vision EQ in, but you weren't actually using it for anything. So is what's developing the air in her vocal if we're, if you're not using an EQ to do it? Yeah. You know, uh, I, I would have to say, I, I mean, I think that's in her voice, honestly. I think that's just her. It's just her. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, uh, you know, the, sh sh this, you know, her name's Ryan Wright, by the way. She, she's a fantastic singer and she'll just, uh, you know, good singers make engineers look good. Um, <laughs> I will say this, I, you know, I am, dr I'm also driving gain here in the mm -hmm. in input to the vision console. So I'm pushing into this, I'm high passing here. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I just tend to build chains like reactively as I go. Yeah. Um, the, I, I find that maybe some of the air is coming from this. Cause this guy, let's see, let's see. You can, if people wanted to see what this is doing, um, but I never really gone this far. And you can see. Kill me when I saw her in the back of your car. You can, you know, when she's breathy, car and all, like all the end lines, none of them were triggering that mid thing. So she's that's actually the mids in 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 context. That's the mids coming forward, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm pu pushing them down when they're when she's harder, but when she's soft, it lets the mids come up. So yeah, it's a, I think this is a, for what people are hearing at home. I think a lot of it is from this one because as you guys are seeing it, the majority of her phrase, both the low and the mid, are kind of they're cutting just a little bit. You know, a few dB here or there, but that top end only reacts when there's a little bit of an essiness. But yeah. So, you know, and when she's is, breathy, they let go and yeah. let it fill in. Because otherwise, if you did this with static EQ, she'd be you she'd be thin. You know, mm -hmm. you'd yep. be thinning her out. This is if you guys are walking away from from the show with one tip, it's like think of you know, it's not always a, especially for airiness, breathiness. It's not always necessarily about just grabbing EQ, boosting those those highs. It can be just mm -hmm. as much of kind of taming your your mids and your lows on a vocal, and and kind of and I love the way that Drew did on this one of doing it dynamically rather than just statically with an EQ. Yeah. And that that dynamic EQ is sort of acting as a deesser, but it's but also the deesser. Let's see what it's doing. Been down, but I never really gone this far. So it's doing it's it's doing mm -hmm. it's here and there. Kill me when I saw her in the back of your car. And this is like in, in modern pop music, deessers are your best friends for like mm -hmm. to push a vocal, to put it really up front, to really like you know, just the the byproduct of a lot of this processing is 
the S's become so much more apparent. So using a very mm -hmm. transparent de uh, or like as Drew's done here, kind of chaining a few of them. So like the Sooth is doing a little bit, the dynamic EQ is doing a little bit, the de is doing a little bit. That uh, the cumulative effect of those is that you now have a, a vocal that doesn't rip your ears off when you listen to it on earbuds. Yeah, and th just just in case people are wondering, you know, there's no such thing as over processed. It either sounds good or it doesn't sound good. Nobody knows how many plugins I had on it. Yeah, it doesn't. That's irrelevant. It's just forget about it. Forget that. Get that out of your head. That yep. oh oh, why do you have so many plugins on it? I don't care. What does it sound like? That's it. End That's of it. end of discussion. <laughs> Love it. Uh, and let me scroll back here through the question. You know, uh, someone's asking like, you know, could they use, uh, you know, we've shown this in the show before of like using the UA effects pedals as reverbs and delays. Uh, and yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You could totally do that. And, uh, we did a whole episode where we, we kind of showed off some chains using the pedals, uh, as yeah. part of those, um, using it, sending out through a hardware, uh, output and then coming back in. Uh, is is very doable and sounds uh, very very lovely. Um, and on the chorus, just to finish this out, on the mm -hmm. chorus, this because this has two lead vocals. There's basically a verse lead vocal and a chorus lead vocal, and I'm using very similar stuff on the on the on the chorus lead vocal, except, um, and this is you know a nice another little thing you can do is I'm just going out into a big you know into this BX20, which is just a big lush reverb that makes adds a lot of sort of volume and density so on the course when the course kicks in which we haven't heard yet but like that has which maybe we'll come back to when we're doing background vocals um yeah it just has another element so the, the, whole, the whole idea is to just you know get your interest and hold it i yeah. guess you know and give you little things to listen to so i love it yeah that's a and that is one thing i, I wanted us to touch on is like the storytelling sonically that needs that should happen for for songs uh is exactly what drew just alluded to of like you know making your verse vocal with one chain with one set of effects and then getting to the chorus and not only will the vocal production change maybe add the harmonies or doubles but then also think about think about your effects right should it get more dense should it get more sparse uh yeah. should there be more spread there should be more delay like don't uh, the thing that will make a very exciting and interesting sounding mix is adding dynamic things to it changing the arrangement of the effects and the sonics of it can have just as much of an impact as the song and the, the songwriting and the arrangement as well um so yeah uh, matt i'd love to kind of dive into one of your chains here as well uh the, you know compare and contrast a little bit of of your workflow and uh and ideas and tricks yeah for sure <clears throat> so um when i'm starting on a vocal usually like the order of operations um as far as inserts go would usually be things for like fixing. Um, so that would be like tuning, DSing, uh, things that aren't going to have like a big impact on the sound, but they're just problems that need to be solved before I can do other things. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, I'm doing a little bit of auto tune, um, which is really not uh, doing much heavy lifting at all. It's, uh, it's probably like doing 10 to 20 cents on either side. Um, so just touching it and then um, doing the, again, the precision DS or I love this thing. It's like, you can pretty much load it up, turn two knobs, and you got great DSing. Yeah, so doesn't need to be more complicated than that. Um, so yeah, it's just doing probably between three and five, maybe seven uh, around seven k. Um, so that kind of fixes up, you know, tunes the vocals a little bit, gets rid of the sibilance, um, and then I get into kind of sweetening. Um, and for me, I, I kind of flip flop back and forth between doing pre compression EQ and post compression EQ depending on you know what I'm working with. Mm -hmm. um, in this particular case, I did it pre because I wanted to. to add a little bit of sweetening before I go into the compressors. Um, so I'm, I'm doing the, uh, the low end trick here, just add a little bit of body. And even though, you know, it's at a hundred, which seems like way too low to really have any kind of significant impact on vocals. Um, but since this ha thing has such like uh, gentle musical curves, it's actually boosting, you know, much higher than a hundred. It's probably, you know, up into two, three. So it's adding a little bit of body. Yep. Um, and then I'm doing a little bit of presence boost, uh, with at three K on this side. Well, and I know like the the whole EQ before or after compression. This is something that I've seen people get like really lost in the rabbit hole of thought of, of like overthinking what should come right. first, what should come, and like the, I think probably to me the simplest way to always think about this is like, do you want do you want to you know change the tone that the compressor is hearing? Like, do you want it, Do you want to like what Matt just did here? Right, give a little bit more body, a little bit more presence, and then you know have the compressors reacting to that. Or do you want the compressors to react and then sweeten it afterwards? And like, 
there's there's no one right way or wrong way of, of approaching it. It's just your reaction in the moment as you're working through a project. Oh, I want to do this, and then I want that. And of course, you can always play around by just rearranging these, and if one sounds better than the other, roll with it. There, you know, it's no yeah. science. And, and the other answer yeah. is do both. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll usually start with it. I'll usually start with it either ahead of behind, depending on how I'm feeling that day. And then before I'm done with it, definitely once or twice, I'll just pop it into the other position just to see, you know, just to see what I'm missing. Nice. So killer. So then, yeah, in uh, this case, um, I wanted to kind of exaggerate the EQ moves that I'm doing by doing it before the compression. Mm -hmm. um, so I got that going into 1176, uh, the AE anniversary edition, which is basically the blue stripe, but a little bit more modern, less noisy. Um, so this is what's doing like um, the most of the heavy lifting it's doing, you know, seven db of compression pretty much the whole time it's really parking the vocal right there not letting it move too much um and then i'm going into the cl1b uh right afterwards which is similar to like the popular trick of doing 1176 into an la2a mm -hmm. um, i chose the cl1b because i really like the way it sounds just instantly give stuff that kind of like radio ready up front in your face sound to me yeah. Uh, well, and I love too that it's like a fully variable optical compressor, right? So like you're getting you're yeah. getting a vibe of like a, what a LA two A has, but you also get full control over the attack release and ratio, uh, which you don't get with the LA two A. Exactly, and I think I probably actually started with an LA two A in this, and it just wasn't quite getting there mm -hmm. um, where I want it to be. But yeah, the tube tech gives you kind of the same sound, same vibe, but with much more control. Um, and I really love the uh, the fixed slash manual setting it has on here where it, it basically changes the range of the attack and release. Um, so it basically sets it around the range of what a typical optical compressor would be. And then you can dial it in with kind of fine tuning from there. It's really, really neat. Yeah. The other cool thing about that one is it doesn't have that one actually doesn't have any modeled nonlinearity. So it, it's less colored. So if you want the you want the feel and the control of an L.A. two, but not the coloration that you would get mm -hmm. with, you know, with the Mark two versions of the plugins, this can be a great choice in those situations as well. Yeah, yeah, sonically, it's like uh, a little bit closer to like the legacy versions, but with, you know, many more features. So it's a yeah. really cool option. Love it. Um, so, yeah, this isn't doing nearly as much compression, probably two to three dB, um, again, just to give it the kind of upfront sound. Um, and I like the tone of this box, too. So part of the reason I'm using it is not just for dynamics control. It's also just to give it that kind of tone um, mm -hmm. that the CL1B has. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going into a third compressor, but I'm not doing any compression with it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, man, three compressors. That, that's this is this is something interesting. But oh, you're using the stressor trick. Yep, this is on one to one. Um, pretty much default settings, attack and release don't matter because it's in one to one, and I just have the distortion two mode on. Um, so this is really just adding some second order harmonics just to kind of pop the vocal up, give it a little bit more presence, a, kind of a tiny, tiny bit of coarseness to it that I really like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just a kind of a last uh, last little touch on it. And this is kind of almost doing the job um, of an EQ, you know, a post-compressor EQ, where it's just a little bit of post-compression sweetening, just adding some harmonics. So. And yeah. Matt, did you pull back the compression, the mix knob a tiny bit on purpose? Is that just to I get did, a little yeah. less? Yeah, just a little yeah. less. Yeah, that was like one of the... Um, you know, kind of when I'm starting to mix, things are kind of big, broad gestures, and I'm making bigger cuts and bigger moves. Um, then towards the end of the mix, things get more subtle and more subtle and more subtle. And this is definitely something I did towards the end, where it's like I just need a little bit less presence, a little bit <laughs> less of that coarseness on the vocals. Not much, right. just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, it does make a difference. That's rad. All right, so now we got it. Let's let's take a listen. I, I want to hear. You've got me intrigued with with all the moves that you've made here. Uh, what's what's the results of these? Right on to uh, probably without all the reverb and stuff first, we'll do the same thing that Drew did. Rad. Um, yeah, let me uh, even kill the background vocals and the ear candy and stuff so we can just hear the lead vocal. <clears throat> all right, so this is uh, with all the processing. Your fears may never come. Cool. So yeah, it's like definitely where I want it. It's parked. It's not, um, the dynamics are good. It's, it's not moving around too much. It's definitely like the center of attention, mm -hmm. uh, but it's super dry. You know, it's bone dry as you can tell. Yeah. Um, so first thing I did, uh, was add a little bit of reverb and I have two reverb set up. Um, they're pretty much the same reverb, but one I'm using for the main, like pretty much all the instruments and stuff. Um, then one I'm using for the lead vocals. And the only difference is the lead vocal has like a slightly 
uh, less decay time. It's 3.2 instead of 3.5. And then I'm doing um, side chain compression. So basically to get the, uh, the reverb out of the way of the vocal. And the way I'm doing that is I have the uh, main vocal side chained into the reverb. Mm-hmm. And then I have the API 2500 inserted after the reverb. Um, so whenever the vocal is playing, it, it basically attenuates the reverb just a little bit, like um, 4 dB max probably, um, just to get it out of the way. And then when the vocal goes away, the reverb just sweeps up just subtly to kind of fill the space in between the, the vocal phrases. That's right. <clears throat> um, and then I did the, the same kind of thing with um, just a slapback uh, delay. This is the nonlinear 2 program, really, really short decay time, 0.1. Um, and again, I'm doing uh, API 2500 inserted afterwards with the lead vocal side chained in. So whenever the uh, the lead vocal plays, it attenuates the reverb a little bit. Or sorry, the delay. So here's what it sounds like with uh, reverb and delay. Your fears may never come. So yeah, it uh, just kind of puts it into space with the mix a little bit more. It's no longer like completely dry and sitting right on top of other stuff that has reverb. It kind of pushes it a little bit backwards into the mix. And now it sounds like it's all one cohesive thing. Yeah. I love that. And especially using that ducking, right? Cause like, this is, she's singing these longer phrases. So like, you know, just having reverb swimming around while she's holding out these longer notes, those are probably the parts that are, are most being affected by the side chain. So uh, this way, you know, it kind of cleans up, pulls her forward a little bit, and then as soon as she's done singing, whew, here come the chain, here come the reverb and delay is kind of speaking out a little bit stronger. Yeah, yeah. and that's kind of uh, gets into production territory because you know part of the reason I was doing that because the way that the vocal is structured, there's these big spaces between the phrases mm-hmm. um, where kind of nothing's happening, and since the vocal is such a big attention grabber, it's like once that goes away, you're like, what am I supposed to be paying attention to? Yeah. Um, so yeah, part of that having the reverb and the delay sweep up after the vocal is gone is just to kind of fill the space in between the phrases. And I did some other stuff that I'll, I'll talk about later to do that as well. Um, but kind of the last piece to that main vocal sound is a, a wide bus, mm-hmm. which is um, very similar to what Drew did. It's the DMX um, delay and pitch uh, shifter, but it's it's the delay settings, which is a little bit of tweaks. So I think I I probably just tweaked the delay times just barely, but um, still has the same, you know, down a little bit on the left side, up a little bit on the right side. Um, and then I'm feeding... Before that, I have the flanger doubler um, in stereo flanger mode on super, super slow. It's on 0.02 uh, mm-hmm. hertz speed. So it's just doing these really, really minor kind of changes between left and right um, just to give you a little bit more movement, a little bit more stereo spread. And the, the mix is down really, really low on this. I'm just adding a tiny, tiny little bit of difference in the left and right um, before going to the stereo, or before going into the DMX, just kind of enhance that stereo ness just a little bit. Nice. Right. Was that on in the last playback, or did you just turn that one on? I just turned that one on. Yeah, let's hear that. I'm I'm really curious. Yeah, so that that one's you know pulled down pretty far, so it'll be pretty subtle, but um, hopefully you can hear it. Your fears may never come. These years have come undone. See, I think it kind of just takes the vocal from being like right in the center and just kind of makes a little bit wider. So it's still in the center, but it's occupying more of that center space. Mm-hmm. Um, just can you do that? Can you, can you bring it in and do it one more time and just bring that, that wide bus in and out? Because this is, you guys are going to see this is a really common trick. The, the vocal spread thing is maybe one of the most important things for a lead vocal to stand out is this sort of trick using something that kind of spreads it, gives it the stereoness, helps bring so much to the, to what's in the middle. Uh, yeah, do you mind playing that one more time and just kick it in and out a little bit as she's singing so we can hear the before and after? Yeah, totally. So here's with it on. Your fears may never Off. come. These years on. have come undone. Dude, the, let me, um, the, li- the life that that gives it, like I heard, especially when he, when he, when it was on and then you took it away, it instantly was like, oh, something's missing. Like it, it, I missed it the instant you took it off. Yeah. It's almost like imperceptible, you know, when it's on, it just, that's how it sounds like it's supposed to be. But yeah, when you take it away, it's like, oh yeah, something's a little bit different. I don't like it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, I liked it and now, now I, I just, I don't like it quite as much. What's going on? Yeah. 
Yeah, and um, like I think Drew was doing the same thing, but I'm actually um, feeding from that vocal wide bus then into the delay and the reverb just to give us a little bit more stereo width delay and reverb as well. That's a cool little trick. Right. Nice, man. Uh, cool, yeah. Any, anything else you want to touch on before uh, I show off my example? Yeah, I think that's the, the basis of the vocal sound. Everything else I did was kind of ear candy and effects and kind of stuff, which we'll get to later. So, yeah, I think we're good. Rad. Uh, all right, I'll keep us moving. I, I did see, you know, someone was asking a little bit earlier here in the chat, asking about, uh, man, it'd be so cool if I could download uh, these sessions and, and have them on my system. Well, the example I'm going to show you guys, you, you, literally, you can do this, guys. Uh, if, <laughs> if you're if you own an Apollo and you're on a Mac, make sure you guys have got Luna. Uh, and the, Inside of Luna, if you go over to the Discover tab, there is a wealth of sessions available. Luna sessions over here on the right-hand side. Uh, so the session I've pulled up here is one that I mixed, uh, Saturation, uh, by the, my homie Greaves, who was also in that in the video I, I had shouted out earlier. Uh, so these are full sessions that you can download and open up. And this is literally the one I have open right now is uh, the session that I re-downloaded from the link and wanted to make sure it was all exactly what you guys would see as well. Um, so in here, you guys can kind of check out, check out the chains uh, as I've put it together. This one is... You guys, are, you guys, are, you're noticing some themes come up here, so I'm not going to harp on it too much. But I'm, I'm right with Matt and Drew of like the lead vocal, you know, my lead verse vocal here. Um, it's all about kind of, you know, a little bit of fixing, a little bit of, in this one, this was a, a really fun session to do with Greaves because uh, he's he's good at what he does already. You guys, if you've watched any videos with him uh, that we've done in the past, you know that like homie knows what he's doing already. So some of this stuff arrived to me already done to my liking i may have tweaked it a little bit here or there but just a little bit you know pulling out some 300 pulling out some 800 these are kind of like the, the muddy and the honky regions you know the stuff that can get <laughs> yeah. a little honk you know, it's, it's just a little a little, a little cleanup and i guess a little dip here at uh 4.5 going into the precision de you guys are noticing a theme here we all are all huge precision de fans and then I'm doing, you know, similar to what uh, Matt and Drew have done here as well, where I'm, I'm chaining together an 1176 into an LA-2A. Uh, this is, you know, this is just such a classic combo for, for compression for vocals. Use 11, and I like doing it this way. So I like hitting the 1176 first. This one is, you know, it's on the slow attack and fast release, but, you know, as you guys all know, if you've used 1176 in the past, even though it's on a slow attack, it's still a pretty fast attack. Um, yeah. Eight to one ratio. So this one is here to do do the you know kind of the immediacy, the kind of like you know reacting to his vocal in the in the moment. And then the LA two way there is to kind of follow it up and be this little bit more gentle ride. Um, and so yeah, you know, hopefully you guys are all picking up on a theme here of like chaining together multiple dynamic processes is probably the most it can have just a huge impact on your sound it, it can you can kind of tailor it a little bit and you're not relying on one compressor to do all the work this is this is why this is common in every mix that i do every mix that you're seeing us do uh here today is like using you know a little bit of this for that a little bit you know a little bit of this other one for another thing uh and not being afraid to go one after the other especially for a lead vocal we're, like we can't emphasize this enough of like this is this is really to help bring that lead vocal up front be the most powerful element of the mix uh and again i've got the pull tech as well um doing kind of similar to, to to what matt was doing i'm going for a little bit bigger of a boost uh on the at 100 attenuating just a little bit and you know i saw someone asking a little bit earlier you know what's the low end trick with the pull tech well the low end trick for the pull tech is you know these three controls are all working together so you're setting the the frequency with this knob but when you boost and cut at the same time, they're not perfectly aligned. They're not just taking out, you're not just canceling each other out. They're actually, they're kind of around each other. So you can get this kind of resonant boost that doesn't sound muddy. Um, yeah, because so, they're different filter types, right? The boost mm -hmm. is a shelving filter and the and the attenuate is a peaking type filter. So they're at, you know, even though they appear to be doing the same things, they're, out, they're not. You know? Exactly. Uh, and then I'm coming in here, adding a little bit of 200, cutting out a little 300, uh, and cutting a little bit of five because I guess it was uh, it was maybe feeling a little bit bright when I was when I was working on this. So uh, let me play let me play this part for you guys, and then uh, I'll touch quickly on some of the other 
uh, vocals that are going on here in the verse. Uh, here, let me pull these up so you guys can see the compression as it happens. Jay. Last time I put my face on the screen, I was posted up. Ocean front view chasing dreams. Now I'm locked down, sheltered in place and can't do shit. Last time they wanted me to rap. Let's do this. He called, but the flow's hotter than coals when they heat up. You kick ride, hat in a snare. They get beat up. Chicago boy living in grit city for keeps now. Covered in harmonic distortion, just like the Neve sound. Shit. Alright, so that's with all the effects. Let me just uh bypass them real quick. On the screen, I was posted up. Ocean front view chasing dreams. Now I'm locked down, sheltered in place, and can't do shit. Last time they wanted me to rap. Let's do this. He called, but the flow's hotter than coals when they heat up. It loses so much energy without without all the processing. Here it is back. Check. Last time I put my face on the screen, I was posted up. Ocean front view chasing dreams. Now I'm locked down, sheltered in place, and can't do shit. Last time. Wow. I just like Huge all the difference. body, the yeah. body, like, I mean, he just, he sounds gigantic, you know, in the after, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and puny, you know, before. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's a, it's like a night and day transformation there. Uh, and one thing you guys are going to notice that, you know, is a little bit different on my mix from, from Drew and Matt's. There's just delay. There's just, and it's not even on all the time. It's just a delay throw. <laughs> There's no reverb, and this is this is something. Again, I I go back and forth on this depending on the style of music, depending on uh, on just the overall vibe I'm going for. I try. Uh, I'm with you, Drew. Like I try to make it as dry as possible. I try to start from dry and then really yeah. ask myself, does this need verb? Does this need effects? Does it need a thing to to, to move it forward or kind of add space around it? And in this case, like. It kind of felt great dry and whenever even yeah. doing like the wall even like you know you can see like i've got like a drum room in here so i could you know let's just let's do for sake of experiment let's let's check myself this is the throwing the the vocal that we just heard i just added it into my ocean way that i already had set up here in the session that you know i'm using this to again add some walls around the drums now they're going to be doing that for the vocals let's let's see if it adds anything to the vocal or if it's ruining the vibe Last time I put my face on the screen, I was posted up. Ocean front view chasing dreams, now I'm locked down. Sheltered in place and can't do shit. Last time they wanted me to rap, let's do this. He called, but the flow's hotter than coals when they heat up. The kick ride, hat in a snare, they get beat up. Chicago boy living in grit city for keeps now. Covered in harmonic distortion, just like the Neve sound. Shit, who the hell died and made you boss? My advice, stay in your lane. Shouts to you, God. Might as well stay. I don't know how do you guys how do you guys feel about it? When, obviously, I, try, I exaggerate a little bit and I brought it back to a more reasonable level, but I mean, I, I still think it, it sounded more. I, I felt like it sounds stronger without it. Yeah, I, I liked it without. I like that sound where it just sounds like he's talking right into your ear, like just yeah, right up yeah. on you. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I agree. I agree with my former self. We don't need <laughs> we don't need any room or reverb on this lead vocal. Um, yeah. So yeah, that is, that's. You know, what I did add a little bit to though and, and wanted to touch on for you guys is like uh, you know we've got the the background vocals for this verse and this is as much a this is almost less of a mixing thing and a little bit more of a arrangement thing so you guys will see uh, let me just make these a little bit bigger for you guys um, <clears throat> so again keeping this in kind of a more raw hip-hop vibe Greaves did his main verse, so just a, a single lead, no dubs. He's got this thing, this track called Puffy Dub, which is kind of like the echoes, the responses, the kind of like in between lines. And then he's got verse dubs left and right. And these you'll hear when I, I'm going to solo them, so you guys can can really uh, pull them out. These are super soft, super thin, spread out, not crazy, not left right. Because, and this is something I think we worked on a little bit when we were mixing this. Is like. These shouldn't be distracting. These should not pull your ear away from the man in the middle. He's the lead vocal here. This is the most important one to listen to the whole time. The stuff here on the sides. This is just ear candy. It's just these are just little moments to to savor. Um, so these are very much out of the way, even more so than I, I would do on a, a more pop or um, some other hip hop mixes. Posted up, chasing dreams. Now I'm locked down. 
and can't do shit. Nah. Last time they wanted me to rap, let's do this. He called, but the flow's hotter than coals when they heat up. The kick ride hat in a snare, they get beat up. Chicago boy living in grit city for keeps now. Covered in harmonic distortion, just like the Neve sound. Shit, who so you can hear even when they join for like a bar or two, right? Like they're there, but they're kind of invisible. They're they're yeah, subtle reinforcement. Uh huh. Yeah. Exactly. So and this is you know this was done real simply, just using again Cambridge EQ, thinning it out, adding a lot of that top, and then using uh using this these crazy devices called the faders. Uh, I don't know if you guys if you guys have investigated these much, but it's the uh, these are pulled down, you know, 12 dB down below where the other ones are at. They can go lower. They can go. They can actually go lower. Who they knew? can actually go lower. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then, so you guys probably heard the puffy dub, the the one that's just kind of it's it's much more of a traditional ad lib thing, right? Where it's just kind of responding and hyping up the the lead. Uh, you know, Greaves sent it to me. He already had the saturator on there, which I loved. It kind of gave it this like distorted, very different texture and quality to it. Hyper compressed using the Valley Dynamite. Shout out to the new uh, UI there. Yeah, brand right. new GUI. Yeah. Uh, into the Cambridge again, giving a little bit more emphasis in this like 1.5K area. So it just, it, it's got, a, it's a tight, very kind of affected. And then LA two A just to control its its dynamics overall. Um, so yeah, that's that's one approach to the kind of doing a a, a little bit more of a hip hop style vocal. And then um, I guess I'll uh, I want to talk real quick about uh, the the hook because this is where the texture changes. And we were, you know, I alluded to like, hey, let's talk a little bit about storytelling and and how things change sonically along with your song. This is a great example of that where. We're going from a lead, a dry lead um, with some with some dubs on it to now he gets to the hook. All of a sudden we're working with, uh, you know, we've got four tracks all singing in unison and they're all filling a different a different spot. So you've got a a main lead vocal down the middle. The wind's much colder on the top floor. 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 When things floor, get complicated. Floor. Again with a delay throw on it. We've got a, a dub left and right, and these are gonna no longer be so thin and tucked down. These are gonna be a little bit more up. You can and you can also see here I've hard panned these. So I'm now I'm going from like, hey, kinda hide the doubles and just use them for texture to now, all right, I want like a, a big wide present uh, group vocal. The wind's much colder on the top floor. Floor, floor when things floor, get complicated. Floor, floor. They keep there we go. Now they're now they're working in they're now they're working as a trio, right? And you've got just a lot more dimension to it. And then the final track, this is one that he delivered uh, using the four minute shifter to get that kind of chop and screw that real low deep vocal in there as well. The wind's much colder on the top floor. 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 When things get complicated, they keep pounding on the locked door. Not. And of course, he gets to the second half here and adds a little harmony. Don't get me mistaken. I came straight from the basement. So here again, I'm keeping things pretty simple, guys. Like, you know, using the EQ as he delivered it for the lead and for that uh, formant shifted one, just to give them presence and give them a little bit of cleanup. Hitting it with the precision de-esser. And then compressor and EQ wise on these, I, went a little, I wanted a different flavor for them. So I've got the uh, 33609 into the mag EQ. Um, so here, let me play, I'll, I'll bypass, and these are all working together, guys. So instead of doing a lot of processing on the individual tracks, I've just bust these together, and I'm treating them as one unit. Because that's, to my ears, that's what this one sounded like. Um, oh, and I guess I would be remiss if I, if I ignored the oxide settings up here. <laughs> yeah, you're hitting them pretty uh, they're, hard. Yeah, they're doing because they're doing some work. We're <laughs> yeah. we're doing some work yeah. when we got to this part, and uh, this is you know this is adding harmonics, adding some saturation to the sounds. Uh, so I'll bypass. I'll, let's focus on the bus effects, and then we can also do some tape on and off, so you guys can hear what these are doing. Uh, and I'll keep everything in solo here for the moment, so you guys can hear the stuff nice and. Or yeah, let's keep it in solo for the moment, uh, so you guys can hear what these are doing. But don't get me mistaken. I came straight from the basement. Don't make this complicated. Bring it back to the top of the chorus. All right, here's with the uh, with the bus effects on. The wind's much colder on the top floor. Floor. When things get complicated. And now here's without. The wind's much colder on the top floor. Floor. When things get complicated, they keep pounding. 
And back on. The wind's much colder on the top floor. 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 With things get okay, that's, complicated. That's what's giving it all in its 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 body. Yeah. Uh huh. That's yeah. really that's really anchoring it. And you can see, like, I'm not going nuts with the compression on this one, guys. Like this one, right. we're being very tame. We're being very reasonable and and nice to it. Uh, but this this Maggie Q, the air on that, a little bit of the body here uh, at, at 160, or sorry, at 40, and then 160. We're just adding thickness to it, but then also subtracting out a little bit uh, of the sub, the or the the low low here. Um, so yeah, it's a really powerful combination there. But I'm actually, I'm curious. This has been a while since I've investigated this one. Let's hear what that same part sounds like with and without the oxide on those vocals. The wind's much colder on the top floor. Floor, floor. When things floor. get complicated, they keep pounding on the locked door. Knock. Or, or. But don't get me mistaken. I came straight from the basement. Don't make me. Presence. Right, guys. Yeah. Like uh, this, this and, adds, and, added. and yeah, and that boxing is kind of goes away. That's what I love of it. That I love that you know the, what tape does there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is uh, keeping it simple, keeping it easy, not overdoing any of these aspects of it. But uh, you know, hopefully the thing you guys are walking away from all this stuff is like, man, the effects, mixing, all production choices, mic choice, all these things have to serve the song they have to serve like the the attitude and, and the message that the artist is trying to get across um so it's it, always always important to keep that at the heart and as much as like i would love to like geek out on this one and add some vocal spread to it or add you know more effects right because effects are super fun to work with um what was right for this one was to kind of keep it on the dry side and keep it on the kind of simple easy side so you can really hear what he's saying I don't, I don't know if it's because I'm hungry, but did anybody else think that lyric should have gone bacon instead of basement? I, I don't know. If, that's just me. Uh, I kept hearing bacon. I kept wanting them to go bacon instead of basement. But anyway, I think I might just be hungry. It yeah, might, it, it's probably lunchtime for Drew. Exactly. <laughs> Carry yeah. on. Carry on. Sorry. <laughs> Love it. Uh, great. Well, I guess so. Matt and Drew, you guys, we're kind of we're running a little short in time, but I do want to talk a little bit about background vocals and some background vocal tricks and chains um so drew do you want to yeah we can keep it quick yeah we'll keep yeah. it quick yeah um so a couple things i noticed in the chat people were asking me a little bit about the uh bef before you go ahead and you can you can go to my screen ben yeah. and um the uh uh you know a couple people asked about these being towns and uh tracks and i just wanted to i didn't make mention of the fact that um i was using the simple stereo pan mode so if you're tracking with sphere and you know one, one of the and you and you don't commit um it, it records to a stereo track, as we mentioned, but often that's kind of annoying from a panning standpoint. So I always love to switch over to the simple panner. And then and then basically what it feels like is it feels like a, a mono vocal and it behaves like a mono vocal and I can pan it and all that jazz. So I just figured I'd make quick mention of that. As far as backgrounds go, um, similar to what Ben had done here, I've got this bigger reverb going on the choruses. Um, so if I, yeah, let me, so let me, I'm, I'm queued up for the course here. So I have two things happening here. I have a basic, basically the same chain as I went through for the lead vocal, but I, I there's, it's on a separate track so that we can move, we can change things as needed. The biggest change is that it goes into this big, uh, the, into this big BX reverb, um, mm -hmm. BX 20 reverb. And then, um, so that, that, that you'll notice when I hit play. And then also we have these two, we also have this double and a triple that are, that enter in, um, and I generally, I don't like the hard pan thing. So these guys are at, at 90, you know, 90 left and 90 right. Um, similar chains, but what I've done is I've actually distorted them. Um, I threw I threw raw on them, but crazy subtle, like just a hint of it. Now I'll, I'll play this for you in a second. Um, and and then they go into similar th treatment. So let's just, let's just listen to this. Um. So we can hear those. Let's hear these doubles and triples, which are hard panned with the raw on them. Which is interesting. Because when I played it in context, you would have never thought they were that distorted, right? No. Yeah. And that's that's mostly because the lead vocal is still powerful and your ear is drawn to the clarity of the lead vocal. Um 
But yeah, so that's a good way. Without that, you'll find without that these don't these don't play as big a role. I'm holding on tight, but I'm losing touch. How could you do right? so little? Make it. It's like almost too much of mm -hmm. too much clarity. So these guys are kind of mellowing that out. I'm holding on tight, but I'm losing touch. How could you do so little? Make it so much. Now I'm out. Let you waste my time, cause I know. So so it's, a, it's yeah, it's a similar thing. Such a cool character, man. And like, yeah, you're you're right. Like, it kind of. Uh, I'm gonna use the the word that's like too on the nose here, but it fuzzes them out in a such a cool way, right? Like it, yeah, it blurs them, keeps them crispy and kind of in in the right energy range, but they're just not as distinct or as distracting from the lead anymore. Yeah, yeah. So th that's just the and and th this I'll play that for you if you want. Um, with with and without. So it's a it's a fair bit, mm -hmm. but but anyway, so yeah, so that combined with this big BX reverb, this this song you know goes from this mellow this mellow verse into a big chorus, which we can. Hear. So you get the idea, yeah. That big, that you know, that transformation from that delicate verse into a big chorus, and just lots of different effects changes and all that stuff. So yeah, I so love that's... it. Well, I got a, a good question here from uh, from Raymond. It's like, uh, why screw up natural voices? <laughs> and, uh, why not? Exactly. Why not? Yeah. Why do we plug? Why plug guitars into amps that distort them? I mean, because it's a different sound, you know. Yeah, it's a different, and this is you know, especially like a, a production like this. Like I feel like Drew's hitting it right. Like this is a super dreamy. Like it's got it's got all sorts of airiness. It's got attitude and it's got drive to it though too. Mm -hmm. So like the the way that you're treating these vocals, it still has a dreaminess to it, but it's also got a little energy and a little push and a little like excitement kind of going to it. Um, so yeah, yeah, and if you know this, yeah, if you ever, if you explore Ryan's music, she's, she's, she's got edge to her, you know, she's a foul mouthed little young woman who likes to sing about edgy stuff. So, you know, it, uh -huh. this is in keeping with her, with her vibe. So just FYI. Totally. And this is, you know, the same thing for like the griefs thing. Like why add that format, you know, had that like lower octave kind of screwed up sounding vocal. It's cause like blended in there, like in with everything else, it added the right amount. It added this like this thing that you couldn't identify exactly what you're like authority there, yeah authority yeah, yeah. It, it's like it's like is there a robot like down in there it, like it, it gives yeah. thickness it gives it gives a weird texture that going back to the top show what what matters most about these vocals is like we want them to draw you in and that's as much about the performance and the lyrics and the melody as it is like the sonic things that we can do to also amplify all of the other aspects of it so this is uh, you know why not? Why not keep them natural? It's because like natural, it's natural. It actually sound weird and incomplete on a lot of the stuff that we're showing you guys here. Um, so yeah, Matt, I wanted to get back to you. I know you had some cool background stuff as well on your on your mix. I wanted to uh, ex explore. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, um, for my background vocals, I basically have two different harmonies going on. So let me solo everything up. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, I basically have these, these two different harmonies. I'm, I basically just panned them a little bit left, a little bit right, just to give it a little bit more spread. Um, and then as far as the, the starting processing, uh, it's pretty much the same as my lead vocal. I, re I really just copied over the auto-tune settings and the, uh, the de -esser just to give a little bit tuning, a little bit of a uh, get rid of that sibilance. And then instead of going into – I have no EQ on here. I was perfectly happy with the way these sounded. Um, instead of going into the 1176AE like I did on the – uh, lead vocal something I like to do for background vocals is use a similar compressor but um, I, I you typically like to use the legacy version because it gives you kind of the same compression characteristics but without that transformer modeling and um, without it typically adds less harmonics typically brings things less forward um, has less of a change on the overall tone it just kind of acts as a dynamic processor instead um, so yeah very similar uh, compression settings but using the legacy 1176 instead of the full AE version Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm sending them <clears throat> into the main verb, which isn't getting ducked by the, the lead vocal. So when uh, the lead vocal verb is getting ducked, that main uh, reverb on the, the panned harmonies isn't getting ducked. So they still kind of stay present. Um, then they're feeding into the, the wide bus that I have a little bit more, again, just to give them a little bit more spread to kind of push them out to the side to get them out of the way of that main vocal up front. Nice. 
So let me uh, play it with and without. So here's no harmonies. Oh, let me start. And your fears may never come. And here's with. And these years have come undone. Then uh, here's it's kind of like it almost sounds end. like it sounds like angels on the side of the mix, right? Yeah, it's like not uh, not a really clear like present voice. It just adds this kind of patty sound that kind of mm -hmm. surrounds the main vocal, just kind of fills it out a little bit. Um, and here's what it sounds like in the mix. Your fears may never come. And without. Yeah, it just adds a little bit of cloudy kind of harmony around the vocal. That's really mm -hmm. nice. Oh, I love that, dude. Yeah, and then the couple other little things I want to talk about that I did to kind of add interest to it, um, which are just delay throws, which is pretty common. But instead of um, doing delay throws the typical way where you would automate the send on the actual original track, um, the way I like to do it is just create a new track here. I basically just duplicated the, uh, the main vocal track without content, which will copy all your plugins, all your sends, and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went through and just kind of chopped out the first word of each of the vocals. Okay. Um, and then this uh, this track is being sent to that main verb. So all I have to do is basically solo this track, and then I export just the uh, the verb track. So that would look like this. So yeah, I'm basically um, I'm not I'm soloing the track, but I'm actually exporting a different track. That way, all that's being sent to the reverb is just that those vocal chops mm -hmm. um so export that whole thing load them back into luna uh and right click and reverse and then play with the timing and what you end up with is um, kind of a, a lead in to the vocals so just uh i tucked it real down in the mix it's very subtle um but just kind of like gives you a hint that something's coming and then it builds up to the vocal dropping and gives it a little bit more uh, presence a little more dramaticness to it so here's what it sounds like uh soloed And your feet And your feet Oh change my selection here. Look at that. And your fears may never come These years Yeah, once you once right, you, would have been busy. you would have been busy in the 90s with all the metal guys. They, that, that reverse reverb thing, man. Mm -hmm. they, uh, oh, yeah. they loved that. <laughs> yeah, for like post-chorus dropping into the verse. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was real hot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, here in the full mix, you can hear it's much more subtle, but it just kind of gives you a hint that something's coming and just adds like... Uh, it's drama. Mm, yeah, drama. adds a little more drama to that change in the yeah. chorus. Yeah. Yeah, pretty subtle, but um, pretty cool. And then uh, something I did towards the end, which is kind of use that same effect, um, but then did the, the same kind of thing that Ben did, where I basically um, pitched down, uh, copied the vocal, pitched it down by an octave, a little bit more than an octave, just add a little bit of presence to this uh, last phrase here. Oh, that was uh, <laughs> like from the depths of that was hell. nice how it, yeah, yeah. How it faded in oh, yeah dude, it was that, a little bit louder than uh, i had it originally but you, you get the idea yeah dude that's, that's super and it looks like yeah you got like a wide you know, throwing that into like studio d dmx kind of adding making that super stereo and uh, it's a big moment yeah and exactly doing the same kind of thing that i had on the wide bus where um i'm using a studio d because it's a stereo file, but it's pretty much the same thing on left and right. So mm -hmm. I'm using Studio D to create differences in left and right, and then I'm feeding that into the DMX, which exaggerates those differences even more. So yeah, it's kind of, again, getting it out of the way of that vocal that's right in the, the center. That's right. Um, and yeah, real quick, the last thing I did here um, for Ear Candy was just basic delay throws. Um, but I printed them so I could time stretch them and make them fit a little bit better. And that sounds like this. Your feet. So 
So again, just kind of fills that space between the phrases, just kind of keeps your interest until the next vocal line comes. And yeah, adds a little bit of ear candy. It makes it interesting. And man, the, the more and more I've been doing this, like, you know, in both Drew and I's examples, we had our delay throws with automated reverb sends. I'm, I'm more in Matt's camp these days of like, I love the, the chop it, put it on its own track, give it a delay. Uh, and then sometimes even like what Matt did of like printing it and kind of committing, Hey, here's my delay throws. Uh, in fact, you know, one of the producers I work, I work with all the time now, he, he just knows, he just delivers me all the throws basically done and how he envisions them. So I get, you know, all the, the main vocal tracks, you know, are, are dry, you know, they'll come tuned or whatever, but everything else about them is just it kind of ready for me to, to do what I need to do. But then down below, there will be sometimes like 10, 15 tracks of different throws that are like reverb throws, delay throws, et cetera. And I love having those as their own tracks. So then, it, you know, it's a, it's just a blending game. It's not so much a like, hey, let me reinvent and recreate stuff that's in the rough mix that you, the artist already loved and instead i'm just like oh let me just a little bit less of this one here a little bit more of this one oh i want to make this one wider like you get a little bit more creative uh with it and it's a, a great a great way of handling delay throws that are transferable uh from one session to another yeah yeah especially in, in this project uh things weren't perfectly synced to the grid exactly so Printing it allowed me to time stretch and kind of, you know, finesse it and get it to fit a little bit better that a sync delay wouldn't let me get there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so, so we've got a couple of questions I want to wrap around to, and then we got to, we'll, we'll quickly jump into our studio showdown. Uh, a lot of people are asking about the formant shifter uh, that Greaves had on there. Uh, and as you guys remember, it was, it, it was committed. It came to me already printed, but if i'm not wrong i'm 99 percent sure it's from our, our friends over at sound toys uh this little altar boy is a, a very powerful plugin mainly in the fact that you get pitch shift and formant shift and they don't have to be exactly the same um so what you can do is you can come in here you can change the format which gives it that kind of weird uh, unnatural sound you know when you go down you get this kind of like the pitch is still where it was <laughs> But the formant of it, the kind of the timbre, the quality of it is now an octave lower. Uh, and likewise, if you take it an octave up, it can sound really, really interesting and gnarly. But again, keeping the pitch where it's at. Um, so I'm 90% sure that he committed, he printed it through uh, through this and then delivered it to me with it all all prepped up. So that's why you don't, you don't see that one there in the session. Um, yeah. I was going to ask you that because that's what it sounded like to me too. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, ninety nine percent sure that it, I, I've used enough Alter Boy in my in my life to know that that's that sound. Uh, but yeah. there's a few other plugins that do it, like Melodyne allows you to do formant shifting. Uh, the native version of Autotune has formant shifting, so there's a few other places you can find this effect. Uh, but Little Alter Boy is just one of the most direct and easiest <laughs> easiest to use one um, that changes the format without changing the pitch. Um, and then yeah, a bunch of other people kind of asking, you know, we're pulling up big sessions and they're seeing lots of plugins and they're wondering about our DSPs, uh, over here. So, uh, yeah, we're, you know, we all work for UA. So we're, we're in the fortunate position of, of having pretty awesome rigs. Uh, personally, I'm on a X8 with an X16. So I've got two, uh, Hexa DSP Apollos followed by two Octo satellites and then a twin on the end of it. So dsp for days over here uh matt what do you what are you running uh, in terms of hardware um right now i got an x6 and an x8 so that's 12 dsps and i recently just added an apollo 16 and apollo x4 in the back where you can't see um so that's 20 dsps total mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> yeah so plenty L plenty <laughs> how about you drew <laughs> yeah people are gonna be mad at me uh, <laughs> I, well, I have a i have a an, an octo card an octo satellite an x16 two x8 p's and a twin yeah so i don't i don't know how it's like 40 40 chips or something it's it's ridiculous <laughs> it's a lot we what? we're we know we we 100 percent acknowledge yeah. that we are, are super spoiled but at we're the same blessed, time yes uh you know the the cool thing here is like we do a lot of processing on the way in you know this is one of the reasons why like personally the, a lot i spend a lot of my time when i'm not here mix on the big rig I work on an Apollo solo all the time because I yeah, really like I, I like the challenge and uh, the limitations that you get from working with a small DSP system like the solo is I end up just printing stuff through, you know, the Fender 55 if I'm doing guitar, or, you know, printing through the Avalon, doing a lot of that work up front in real time. Uh, and then when it comes to mixing, 
I can, you know, if I'm if I'm downstairs rocking the solo, I'll use the API Vision console on all the tracks. So I'm using the native horsepower for all of the EQ and compression inside of my Luna session. Same with like the Oxide and Studer. That's all happening natively, and then I just track in with some effects uh, as I do it. And then you know maybe when it comes to the final polish, throw a little bit of a like a pure plate or you know some of the more DSP efficient plugins that are on the platforms as opposed to the heavy hitters uh, when I'm spoiled and up here in this room. Um, and then yeah, computer wise, uh, we're all running basically Mac Pros. I uh, think Drew, you've got like the new one of the new new trash cans, yeah. right? Uh, 2019, yeah, and that, so back to the cheese grater. Yeah, new cheese grater, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, these are, you know, we're, we're running pre pretty serious studio machines over here, a lot of DSP. Uh, but as you guys are seeing, we're not, you know, our machines are also, by the way, we're doing streaming at the same time on all these. Yeah. Uh, so we're sharing. We, we, you need that. Yeah, you need that extra beef to, to handle the overload. I, I used to run a Mac Mini, which was perfectly fine for all of my operations. But like when we added in this stuff, it it, it stopped being able to, to do it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah, the so I guess with that, guys, this has been a ton of vocal tricks. <laughs> a lot, we talked a lot about how important it is to get the tracking right. Think about the production. <laughs> work with the vocalist, work with the artist. But then after the fact, as you guys saw, there's so many different ways to kind of chain together EQ, compression, dynamics, de-essing, reverb, vocal spread, delay, like the the possibilities here are really endless. But, uh, you know, judging by the, the chat here, I've seen you guys have seen some cool things that you're going to pick up and, and put in your pocket and try out on your next mix, which that's 100. That's exactly what we were going for. We're, we're really hoping that you guys are inspired and uh, and you know, kind of curious to go try these for yourselves on on your next mix. Um, so the to wrap up, we're gonna quickly do our studio shout out. This is my favorite part of the show every week now because uh, we get to kind of peek in and see your guys' studios and uh, and rate and roast them alongside with you guys. Uh, so this week we've got two wonderful studios, some cool little home studio spaces. Uh, and first up, we've got uh, Custom D28, little home studio update with the 610 Solo, U87, and uh, he's just <clears throat> add some Apollo X8Ps to the rack and Luna. Like, this is this is a stacked little home studio, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, you can see down here, we've got the X8Ps. Looks like the SSL Fusion, I believe, up above mm -hmm. that. Uh, Atom monitors up here on the desk, the TC meter, the 80, you know, you can't really go wrong with the 87. I appreciate the, the acoustics. We got, you know, some bass mm -hmm. traps, some, some, uh, monitors some are up. So those, so those tweeters are up at ear height, which mm -hmm. is a good thing. Yeah. Yep. It's got a gaming chair. So, you know, it, you know, <laughs> it, you know, it goes fast. It, it works well. <laughs> Little and it's absorber it's a broadband absorber as well oh totally yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah i meant to say racing chair slash bass absorber yep you're right yeah. uh that's a really cool spot I and mean, you can see luna luna's there launching up in the background um i'm trying I'm, I'm struggling to find fault here um what's up with that carpet looks like a hotel conference room <laughs> True, <laughs> the carpet tiles, the carpet tiles from, that he stole from a stole from the local hotel. Yeah. Uh, I'm kidding. But, though. It looks like an awesome studio. <laughs> yeah, cool guitar selection too. I dig, I dig the guitars. And yeah. yeah, I mean, '87 you cannot go wrong with that with that mic. Nope. Um, all right, so everyone in chat, scale of one to ten. Let me know what you guys think while we do our scores here. Man, this one's a solid. Uh, I think I would I would normally just give it a seven, but the fact that he's got way more io than he needs means that this <laughs> yeah. is, like he's ready he's ready to like continue aspirational to grow. exactly so yeah he, yeah he, to me he gets an eight for the for the double eight p's yeah yeah you know what i'm gonna go with the double eight p's in an 87 like and the monitor and the thoughtfulness of those monitors being at the right height i'm gonna go eight as well Mm-hmm. yep nice matt uh i'll go seven <clears throat> yeah mm -hmm. i dig it maybe a little sterile but definitely seems like a good workspace yeah. Yeah, I can I can see that, Matt. Good point. Yep, yep. All right, chat numbers coming through here on the chat right now. I see a seven, an eight, a six, an eight. Uh, I'll wait for a few more to come in. I love the the time delay is 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 lovely here. Uh, <laughs> seven, nine. Ooh, you know, we're good. Seven, hmm. seven. Ooh, this is gonna be tough. This is I think it's coming down between like a seven or an eight from the chat. 
typically I round up. I'm, I'm, I try to be generous as possible. Yeah, you're this. very fair. Eight. You're very fair, Ben. Needs more vibe. Got the 87. You know, so I th the chat looks like it's between a seven and eight. You guys, maybe. I think they're going towards Matt, maybe. It seems like they're maybe it's, going a little towards the little, seven, maybe. Seems a little on the seven side. Another seven, yeah. another eight. Yeah, you guys are making this hard. All right. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I think we're leaning towards seven now. With them I, think it, I think it is leaning towards seven because it's missing lights. It's a clean desk. But then we got another eight. All right, we're going to go seven. Well, I, I, I trust you guys on that one. All right. Hos <laughs> hospital vibes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there, there, there's some, you know, not to knock it. There's, there's like this royal blue. It's, you know, it's a nice yeah. wooden desk, but all right. Yeah, it's to each their own. The next one, this one, I like the warm vibes in this one. This one, yeah. this is a cool spot. Check out the chandelier. Like, oh yeah, this is rad. All right, let's let's break it down. Mustard we got, walls. Uh huh. Uh, this yeah. is uh, Michelle Lambert. Music, in my opinion, the best way to mix with Luna is to use multiple computers with audio gritter. Uh, Drew may not agree with the speaker placement, but I swear <laughs> that's a sweet spot for the Mackies. I believe <laughs> you, Michelle. Knew. I believe you. I believe you. I'm just you know. So we, we've got. I'm, because you're gonna say they're too wide, right? Right, Drew. <laughs> too, like, is, my lips are sealed. <laughs> so, so, uh, but this is cool, really cool spot. We got again. We got Luna rocking. Um, which control server? That's a sixteen. Nucleus. Channel. That's the nucleus. Oh, is, oh no, that's not nucleus. No. That's a. Uh, that's a, a. Is that the banjo with an expander? Yeah, Maybe? I believe. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, yep, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's and an X touch with an X touch expander. Uh, yeah, X touch a, with expander and a Vader <laughs> port. So clearly, Michelle was watching the uh, is. Yeah, gone all in on the control surface stuff. We got the the, the main, spill, the spill feature. Yep. Yeah. yeah uh, two MacBooks and soothe is up on one, so it gets point from me and Drew for sure. Yep. Soothe on one side, <laughs> yeah. thirty three six and nine on another. Yeah. Luna's rocking there in the middle. Um, and then there's another Moment monitor way over heart. here with like it looks like a four eighty plugin on it. Oh um, yeah, that, yeah. Another monitor. It's, it's hard to tell. But we got a twin on the desk, an octo satellite, and a. It's hard to tell which. It's one of the blackface Apollos. Yeah. Uh, good headphones. So yeah, double monitors. We got NS10s, H uh, HR 824. Like this is such a classic, like early 2000s monitor setup. Like totally is. Yeah. I, I, literally every studio I, I ever visited in the in the 2000s, like these were the two most popular speakers there. Or the yeah, Genelec is or NS10s. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Uh, we got a little bit of trapping in the corners, but yeah, they got a, a little it's bit itchy. of absorption. Don't rub up against it. <laughs> Don't rub up against it. <laughs> totally. I love it. But they got absorption, absorption behind the main screen. I love the, do the Korg SV1, the electric piano. That's super rad. It made all the more rad by the, uh, is this a custom finish? On that, it looks like, yeah, custom yeah. zebra wrap or something. Uh huh. Yeah. I, I don't I think, think they I've only come in red or black. That's what I thought, right? Uh, chair to the side. We got acoustic guitar, electric guitar. This is this is a, a really nice, a really cool space. I love the warm lighting. Cozy. Yep, we got the you got the window to the outdoor world as well. Like exercise ball back here, sitting back here. You know, um, yeah, this is a, this is a really cool spot, Michelle. I'm uh, I you know the other one had. The two, oh man! All right, I'm gonna. I do oh, have yeah. to step this one up. One. Uh, this is this is one point better than uh, than the other studio in my mind. How about you, Daryl? Oh gosh, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stay where I'm at. I'm gonna call it because they yeah I'm mm -hmm. gonna stay where I'm at. I'm gonna stay with eight. Stay with eight. All right, Matt. Stay with eight. I think I'm gonna go eight too. Give that an eight. This one, I, yeah, I like the vibe of this one a little bit better. All right, so if the chat votes <laughs> five or better, we've, we're gonna have our winner. Um, all right, there we go. I'm seeing the votes come in now. For this one, we got a seven, we got an eight, we got first reflection points. I think that count. I'm not sure what number that counts as. Uh, <laughs> eight, <laughs> two, an eight, a nine, an eight. Oh yeah, chat. I think chat. It's a little messy. I, yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. I mean, we got a seven, an eight. These are good yin and yang. One's almost too sterile. One's almost a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a good choice, Ben. You, you you picked well here. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, eight, eight, nine. Yep. I think, think Chad's centering. I think Chad is centering around at eight, eight and a half. Yeah. Yep. Let's let's <clears> go eight. <throat> which makes our winner, Michelle Lambert. Congratulations. Congrats, Michelle. You've won a UA Live Congrats, UA Live Michelle. coffee mug. Uh, hit us up social at uaudio.com, and uh, we'll get that sent out to you uh, ASAP. 
And with that, guys, this has been it's been a nice, long, fun, deep dive into vocal mixing. Obviously, there's like I mentioned, there's infinite ways to do this. There's no one right way or wrong way to do it. Uh, but there's simply just you know a lot of ideas and cool you know suggestions to try out on on your next mix. Uh, so we'd love to hear from you guys if you're watching this after the fact. Drop a comment if you got vocal tips that we didn't cover that you think the world needs to know about. Share them down below. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn on the notifications. That way, whenever we go live, your phone will buzz and you'll drop everything and come watch and hang out with us here on Office Hours. Uh, if you've got music you want to share, send us some MP3s and a little description of how you used uh, UAD as a part of your production live at uaudio.com. We love hearing from you guys. Hashtag UA Office Hours will be included in the studio showdown. And uh, if you guys need help and support throughout the week, uh, there's always support lines are always open. Uh, you can find uh, help.uaudio.com, get in touch with support. You can always find Drew over on the UAD forums or cruising around Facebook, Instagram, etc. Um, and yeah, I think we've got next week's gonna be a really fun show. Uh, we're gonna talk, we're gonna deep dive on Volt next week. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about this one, uh, the new Volt interfaces. How do they work? How do they sound? Uh, and we're bringing in we're bringing in a little special guest for this one. I'm, I'm actually going to keep it a little bit of a secret. We're bringing a special <laughs> guest in for next Monday, so you do not want to miss it. Uh, and with that, I guess we'll we'll see you guys back here next Monday. Everybody have a great week and uh, get out there and make some music. Sounds good. See ya. Peace. Peace. <clears throat> Go. Come on, this is the only room with the verb. But I gotta go. <sighs> Thoughts knock around.